good getting internet. So this this part of the video is being recorded last for reference. Um, I had decided last week that, well, while I was in Ireland, and yes, you're going to get an Irish video, hopefully, if I ever edit it. Um, last week when I was in Ireland, or, yeah, I was in Ireland last week, but while I was in Ireland, uh, both my partner and I had a taste for a chicken parmesan, specifically a chicken parmesan sub in my case. I can't speak for my partner. I don't think they would have cared either way as long as it was a chicken parm. Sorry, I need to hold this with a different arm. My shoulder was getting injured. Um, anyway, chicken parmesans are an American and Australian thing, which is a little weird. As far as I can tell, they were independently developed. Um, I'm sure one heard about it from the other type of thing. Anyway, if you were wondering why the camera was shaking, that one's why. That's not a video from me without a kitty, is it? So, um, when I got back home, I decided I was going to make a chicken parm sub. Only, I wanted to try to make it lower carb. Um, chicken parm subs, them being subs, which means that it's on a sub roll or hokey bread or whatever you want to call it, uh, that kind of means that they're very high carb. Not only is it breaded chicken, but you're also putting bread around the breaded chicken and... Um, most places, if you're ordering a chicken parm sub, they add sugar to their tomato sauce, and you get the idea. It's not low-carb. And I only have one good low-carb recipe right now, which is my cheesy chicken and broccoli. So I wanted to try to make this low-carb. So the first step of it, which was going to be on Saturday and turned out to be today. Today is Monday, for reference. Uh, Monday, July 1st is to make the bread low carb. Um, to do this, I ended up finding a recipe online. Hey, me from the future, um, would you mind putting a link to the recipe online in the description? Maybe even show part of it over to my right, your left. I can't move this too much because I don't want to move the kitty out of the way. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's basically that I'm making bread using xanthan gum, and the recipe calls for almond flour. You can replace coconut flour with almond flour, or you could replace almond flour with coconut flour. You can probably do both now that I think about it. If you can't tell, I'm not reading a script. Uh, and make it. So the way I did this, um, I'm going to pull up the recipe really fast so I can see it. Hopefully without having zone kitty hurt me. Um, I found a recipe for low-carb meatball subs. Um, I figured a meatball sub is going to have the same consistency problem that a chicken parm sub is going to have, which is it frequently has a lot of sauce in it, which means certain types of bread would just become soggy and collapse. That's not good for a chicken parm sub. So if this is meant for a meatball sub, that means that it should also work for a chicken parm. And I follow the directions for the dough. As mentioned, the dough requires almond flour. I replaced almond flour with coconut flour because that's what I could find at my local grocery store. I think they were just out of almond flour. And xanthan gum, which I thought I had in the house. Turns out I didn't. That's the reason why I had to do it today instead of Saturday. I had to wait for Amazon to deliver the xanthan gum. So now I have a huge amount of it. Uh, some salt, dried oregano, two teaspoons of baking powder, yeah, I did actually add the baking powder. I was just thinking, did I add that? Yeah. Um, a large egg, which I replaced with a um, dehydrated egg. Um, I don't really eat eggs personally. So as a result, uh, whenever I need eggs for baking purposes, I ended up having to buy a half dozen eggs, use one, and the other five go bad. So I have dehydrated egg that all I have to do is rehydrate it, which is what I did. Uh, one ounce of cream cheese at room temperature. The room temperature part I forgot about until the last moment, so I had to heat it up some, should have been fine. And two cups of finely grated part skim from mozzarella cheese. So basically this is a cheesy bread, which I thought would be perfect for a chicken parm sub. Um, so what I did to make it is that I took a metal mixing bowl and mixed up 
all the ingredients inside of it. Uh, or not all of the ingredients, all of the dry ingredients first. And not the egg yet. So mix that together, then add it in the egg. Just making sure I'm remembering. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, then add it in the egg, mix that up or egg substitute in my case, although it's, it's still made from egg. It's not like I'm replacing that. And yeah, anyway, uh, then add in the cheese, which the cheese isn't going to mix very well because it's cheese and you basically just have crumbs, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Then I set it up on top of a double boiler. A double boiler is where you take a, for those that may not know, a uh, pot of water, boiler on the stove, um, once it's boiling, set it down to a simmer and put another pot on top of it. In this case, I was putting in my mixing, metal mixing bowl. Put the metal mixing bowl on top of it. This allows you to get the heat benefit from boiling water without adding in the water. Here's where the recipe started messing up, though. The recipe never called for any water. I may not have made bread very often, but I do know that it kind of needs water and you're supposed to add certain amounts of water. The only liquid in the entire thing that I had was the liquid that was from the rehydration of the egg. That is not enough liquid to make this work. So as I was mixing it, I had noticed that it was still powder. Um, after about 20 minutes, which it's supposed to take 20 minutes for the entire thing. So obviously this didn't work out very well, but after 20 minutes, I had decided, okay, this isn't working. Everything else was done at this point, and I'll explain that in a moment, but I was looking at it going, well, I can't make it worse by adding water, and it kind of looks like it needs water. So I added a little bit of water, mixed up more, saw, so, okay, that seemed to be having the correct effect. What was supposed to happen is it was supposed to become a dough-like consistency. It was not. It was a bunch of flour consistency. Added in more water and more water. Eventually adding in, um, well, everything else is using freedom units on the recipe, so I might as well use freedom units for this. That'd be uh, about seven and a half ounces of fluid ounces of water total. And that's where things started looking more dough-like. In hindsight, I probably needed even more water or less water. I need to look that up. It looked very crumbly, and you could probably start seeing the crumbles soon enough. Uh, but it was kind of dough-like, so I decided, yeah, this is good enough. It's a very loving video from Zone. I don't normally record videos after I get back from trips. This is the way my cats behave when I get back from any type of trip. They don't punish me or anything like that. It's more they miss me so much. Isn't that right, Zone Kitty? He's actually purring. I don't know if you can hear that. Zone's purr is usually really quiet. Um, there'll be a very occasional time where it gets super loud, but it's been years since I've heard the super loud purr. That's okay. Your purr is nice enough. Anyway, um, so get that all together and then well that's when the pictures start basically um just looking at my pictures yeah so i set it out on a plate or on a um bit of parchment paper flattened out the bread or flattened out as well as i can keep in mind i've never made bread before um i've helped somebody make bread before but i've never made it myself um uh, flattened it out and as per the directions i put my already cooked chicken on top of it. So the chicken, I bought pre-breaded chicken. This The chicken was not low carb. My goal for this was to just do the bread, as I mentioned. So everything else I kept a familiar thing for me. In my case, my local grocery store happened to have had uh, panko, encrusted, panko and parmesan encrusted chicken, breaded chicken on sale. So uh, yes, but that, that's exactly what I need for chicken parm. And I'm lazy. So I had cooked that bef prior to in some vegetable oil, uh, fried it up a bit, basically fried on both sides, then stuck it into my little convection oven for probably around 
15 minutes or so. It was 10 minutes after it reached temperature, but I stuck it in before I started it. So it preheated and then had 10 minutes. Uh, temperature is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, basically, just cooking it all the way through because frying it on both sides did not cook it all the way through because I can't really cook a chicken parm correctly the way you're supposed to do it sets off my paraphobia so i had to modify it but i've already done this type of thing before and so i put on the chicken and then i set my tomato sauce on there this is the tomato sauce i use for pretty much everything it's a marinara sauce um this particular one actually has some chunks of chicken in it so i have a chickeny chicken but whatever uh i mostly grabbed the not chunks of chicken i had cooked it about a month ago, but froze it, and I use parts of it every so often. Anyway, um, set that aside, and that's the picture that you're seeing right now. Uh, yep, it does not look good. You see what I mean by it being crumbly? Um, the, it kind of... If I was better at making bread, this would probably make more sense. Anyway... Uh, from there, I baked it for a while, and this picture is what came out of the oven. It looks very similar, uh, the main difference being that the bread's a little more golden brown. Uh, my brain initially thought, did I just make naan? But no, naan is leavened bread. This would be unleavened, technically, because there's no yeast. I think I have that right, at least. Uh, ah, don't, please don't stand like that. Aww. <laughs> This is what I go through. Sorry for how much the camera's bouncing. I'm literally just holding my phone. Really, cat? You gotta clean my beard now. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah. Um, this is what came out. And I have a couple of extra videos. And <coughs> Roll the video footage, me from the future. Derp. Before I do that, I should mention that I had decided to roll it up. So I took the pieces of parchment paper. This was on a cookie sheet. I forgot to mention the cookie sheet, but I put the parchment paper on a cookie sheet to bake it. And so I picked up the pieces of paper from the parchment to move it and noticed that the bread was moving along with it. It wasn't just breaking in half immediately. So I used the parchment paper to kind of roll it up in a sub-like shape. And, well, this is what happened. <coughs> This actually looks like a chicken parmesan sub. How did I do... Now I'll roll the footage. Um, I think I basically just made a chicken parmesan naan instead of chicken parm sub. I've had little bits of the naan-like thing. It tastes really good, actually. Since the isn't correct, and I had to go very far off of recipe because um, they didn't add any water whatsoever, so this wasn't turning into a dough, but um, I, I think this might actually be good. And this is what happened when I tried to cut it. Uh, this is definitely a crumbly boy, but we'll see how good it is. I have a hunch I'm going to need a fork and knife. I can't believe it. This actually tastes good. Like, really good, not even just, oh, this is a reasonable success. No, no, this actually tastes really good. I messed up so much on this. How? How? Anyway, it's still very crumbly, so I'm going to have to learn how to make it a little bit more doughy. And then next time, I think I'm going to try to bake it rounded up. So I baked it flat, as you probably saw in the previous picture. Um... But how? How indeed, me. How indeed. So um, I only ate half of it, and that was way more than I should have eaten. Uh, I'm used to eating a, um, once more, using freedom units, because that's the phrasing that I'm familiar with. A foot long, so that would be 30 centimeter long chicken parmesan sub. Um... I'm used to eating that as my, holy crap, this is a huge meal, but it's a full meal. It's not, I'm feeling overstuffed or anything. This was smaller than that, probably about 20 centimeters, and I feel overstuffed. Um, which is good. That's actually great, because that means it's filling. And that's one of the things that I was hoping that this would cause to happen. So... 
Yeah, um, I had not I had not intended to make a video about this, but I felt it was necessary. Zen Kitty needed more video time anyway. Uh, yeah, let me know if this type of thing is interesting to people. I, I don't know. I'm mostly making things out of my own free will. Um, or any suggestions. I'm not comfortable with making bread. Um, again, this is the first time I've made any type of bread whatsoever. Um, the only other times I've helped make bread, the bread has been using a bread maker. This was manual making. And it worked. Even though I had to alter so many things. So, yeah. Um, let me know how to deal with that crumbly bread consistency. Uh, it was relatively crumbly in the dough form as well. So I know that it's something I need to do while it's still in dough. I just don't know what. Anyway, good night, Internet. Oh. So I decides to jump off right at the end of the video. How appropriate. Good night. Zone decided to watch me edit. So he's watching me watch himself. Okay. My cats are weird.